So, Warwick, today's question. Yes. Uh, Favourite childhood memory? Where do you come up with this stuff? <laughs> it's a talent I have. They just come to me. Uh, my favourite childhood memory. Can you tell that I'm thinking? Because mm. I can't remember my childhood. <laughs> That's uh, not a good thing. One of my favourite childhood memories, actually, is um, our, our backyard in Canberra. So I, I was born in Canberra, but uh, we left there when I was six years old and came to Queensland. Uh, still barrack for the blues in the origin, by the way. <clears throat> anyway, it was um, our backyard and it snowed one year. Yep. And I remember going out in the backyard and playing in some of the snow that was on like the barbecue table in the backyard. That was pretty cool. I think I was about four or five or something. Cool. Welcome to the Tradies Business Show, helping you get off the tools and into true business ownership so you can spend more time doing the things that matter most. Now, here are your hosts, Warwick Bidwell and Michaela Clark. So welcome to another episode of the Tradies Business Show where Warwick and I tackle the big questions. We have a big one today. Oh, this is huge. This is, it actually caused a lot of controversy. It was a shitstorm on social it media. It was. So we're in a, a Facebook group, not our Tradies Business Toolkit because um, our members already will know the answer to this, but uh, we're in a very popular um, business community on Facebook and some a, a tradie asks the question, they have a landline and they have a mobile and she wanted to get rid of the landline. And so she asked the question, you know, should I get rid of my landline and just have my mobile? Well, hold me Holy down. Holy smokes. There was, uh, I think a few people were going to organise to meet physically and have a punch up over this particular <laughs> question. There was a whole lot of opinions. And obviously, I mean, just looking at, I think there was 50 or 60 posts. Oh, more than that. And <laughs> Within the space of an hour is insane. Yeah, and everyone seems to have an opinion on this. So let, let's go through it. So we're going to answer the question today. <laughs> Should you have a mobile number only for your business yep. or a landline? And that was pretty much the question. And both, right? yes. Yep. But, but to me, nobody said, well, have you ever thought about just having both? And seriously, and I guess I'm kind of you know playing my hand here in terms of my opinion, but... How much does it cost to actually have a landline these days? See, you don't need to have a Telstra, you know, 3-1 or whatever state you're living. You don't have to have a, a fixed number anymore. Like, you could literally just go and buy a one three hundred number mm. and then divert that to your mobile anyway. Yeah. So, I'm pro one three hundred numbers. Yep. So, and, that's... And that's, I, am, I am too. Yeah. So, let's assume that, you know... We'll take that argument out for today because I think you should because then you can divert and do whatever you want and have wonderful people like Tradies VA answer your phone for you. So let's assume that you don't have a 1300 number for the point of this episode. Sure. So, okay, the pros. So this is what people were saying, what they prefer to ring. So local number, landline number. Yep. It's cheaper to ring. Um, It says that they're a real business. Uh, You know, they're not a fly-by-nighter. Um, so you're not going to do half the job and then bugger off because, you know, you don't have an office or something. Um, that you know, you're local. Yep. You're more organized. Them. You've probably got someone sitting in an office or something. All those sorts of things about permanence and trustworthiness and being local and a proper business. The perception was from a lot of people that a proper business has a fixed line or a landline. The other side of the coin, well, actually, the pro mobile camp. Right, yep. so that that was the pro fixed line camp, and then there was the pro mobile camp, which said, "Well, I want to deal with a, a small, honest, you know, little operator just like me, and someone who's real, and I know I can ring the owner directly on their mobile number and talk to the guy who's going to come and do the work and all that sort of stuff, or the girl." And if it's a mobile number, they're going to take my call. I mean, they're assuming that. They've got a mobile that they're always going to take their call. Which is a slight uh, overstatement. But anyway, um, <laughs> as we've proved in uh, one of our episodes, we'll have to dig up the episode number where we did our, our little, uh, well, they weren't prank calls really. But, but yeah, there was this perception that the mobile is going to get me straight to the person who's going to be doing the job. And they can help me straight away because they're not doing anything but sitting there waiting for my call. Now, w- you know as a listener that Michaela and I love you guys, right? Because you're our tradies, and we're here to help you guys improve your business. And from what the feedback we get from you listening to the show is that, by and large, you're doing a lot of the stuff that we talk about, or you're at least having a crack at it. Um, 
But on the off chance that you're not, or that you're a new listener to the show and you haven't got your shit sorted yet, uh, our experience is that most people who have a mobile number listed on their business don't answer the bloody thing. So it's a bit of a misconception there from the pro mobile camp. And that when you do answer that you can action whatever you need to, give them an answer, do whatever you need to right then and there. Because it's the thing about a mobile phone is you're mobile. And unfortunately, look, even from my personal experience as a consumer, and not just tradies here, I'll talk about businesses in general, particularly service businesses, I look at a mobile phone and think, and this person's not going to be focused on me as a customer. Because you're, you could be standing at your kid's kindergarten, you could be down at the beach, you could be having lunch with your mates, you could be under a car, you could be unpacking boxes of stock in the back of your retail business. It's mobile. I know where, where I am when my mobile phone's in my pocket, and it's generally not in my office. Uh, so my perception as a consumer, and it's not the only perception, is that mobile phone, eh, if the owner answers or the person who's got that mobile number listed answers, they're not necessarily going to be 100% focused on me and what I want, and chances are they're not going to be able to write it down either. Um, and I don't know, the experience that I've had in the past is not, on the whole, the best one. However, having a local number, some people just have an answering machine on them because yeah. they're on their mobile. Because they're not there. Yeah. Hi, we're not here right now. Leave a message. It's like, what? No mobile. Come on. So really the upshot, this went on for quite a few hours of people giving their opinion. <laughs> and they were very adamant. I will not ring a business that I has a mobile. I got very heated. Yeah, and I will and not ring. Personal. It's not a real business unless it has a mobile mm-hmm. or a 1300 number or, or whatever. So mm-hmm. it's actually quite a heated topic. We didn't realize. But what's our view, Warwick? Well, to me, it was kind of simple. Uh, maybe I'm a bit dumb, but uh, why don't you have both? Like, everybody has a mobile, right? Yeah. Every, everyone has a mobile these days. I don't know anybody who doesn't have a mobile phone somewhere in their business, whether it's listed or not, it doesn't matter. I think you, you need to think about, first of all, who are your customers? If your customers are more likely to want to get straight to the tradesperson or the technician or the business owner or whatever, list a mobile. But... Here's the thing, if I'm one of your potential customers, and I might only make up 5 or 10 or 30% of your customer base, I would prefer to ring a fixed line, have a fixed line so I can ring you, because I won't ring you if you've only got a mobile, right? Now, you might think I'm an idiot for thinking, now, I'm a bit old school, right? I'm a little bit, you know, I've got some grey around my ears. Um, I like ringing fixed lines, because I hate paying mobile call rates, and I don't want to ring someone who's in a roof, because I know you're not going to be able to look after me. So have both. It's it like to me it was a no brainer. <laughs> have both, and then you cover everybody. Don't ditch the fixed line. Seriously, it's fifteen bucks a month or something for you to have a one three hundred number, and then divert it to your mobile. Yeah, or vice versa. And the other thing is, um, really, I mean, what we bang on about all the time: having the actual trade person actually answer their phone and taking all the calls isn't going to grow and scale your business. Crazy. No. Crazy. So let's think long term, people. Think one three hundred or one eight hundred number one three whatever it is. So then you, if you want to expand, go small. Doesn't matter. You can move that. Do whatever you want with it. Yep. And you can divert one to the other and back to the other one. But even more importantly, is as Michaela's just said, having if if you're a tradesperson listening to this, you're probably charging your time out to customers at between sixty if you're really undervaluing yourself or depending on the trade that you're in, and 100 plus per hour, right? So the best thing you can be doing with your time is not answering your damn phone because I can pay someone 20 bucks an hour to do that, right, in my business. If I wanted to go and employ somebody, I could just get someone to do it. But the problem for a lot of tradies is to do that is going to cost you to have someone sitting in an office somewhere twiddling their thumbs while they wait for the next phone call to come in, right? So there are ways to actually have your phone answered for you full-time without you actually having to have a human employed sitting in your office Facebooking while you're not there. And this is a big fear that a lot of tradies have, is if I go and employ somebody, they're not going to be busy enough, I'm going to spend all this money just to have my phone answered, I'll do it myself and answer the questions. You should be out there billing and making money, depending on the size of your business. So I know that some of our listeners have bigger businesses and you're way beyond that point. But for if you're listening to this and you're like, you know, you 
on your own or you and a couple of guys or something like that, then answering your phone is one of the biggest wastes of your time possible. Uh, and this, I'm, I'm going to let Michaela talk about one of our show supporters here. Um, because it's why, it's why this solution was born, basically. That's right. So, and I know we've done the figures on this, or we have some great examples. Yep. Do we want to run? Well, we'll put that in the, we'll put that in the show notes for today's episode. But, but just looking at some really basic figures and typical call volumes, um, the cost of answering your own phone can be as high as 800 bucks a week. Right, that's the true cost for you as the tradesperson to answer your own phone. So you're losing eight hundred dollars a week. Absolutely. And we've done it conservatively, based on how many calls a week you get, how yep. long each call takes, yep. what you charge out, all that. So, so that's so missed billing and jobs that you miss because you can't answer the phone. And and we all know that people won't leave voicemails these days. And the figures, the stats actually show that seventy two percent of callers don't leave voicemail. They will literally just hang up and ring the next person or find someone else or find another solution. So if you if you can't answer the phone straight away, and this is why a lot of tradies answer their own phone that I talk to, is because they know that if, if they don't answer their phone, they might miss a job. So that's costing real money missing those jobs. And I was talking to someone just recently, uh, and he said he's missing three to five jobs a week because he just he's either not able to answer the phone or he's on the bloody phone to somebody else when it rings and they won't leave messages and he knows that he's got a really great conversion rate when he does get inquiries. So let's say his average job was five hundred dollars yep. or even less. That's you know up to fifteen hundred dollars to two and a half thousand dollars a week just in lost revenue. Yep. That because he's, he's too stubborn to stop answering his own phone. And you know who you are listening to this, by the way. <laughs> So our show supporters, Tradies VA, have a live phone answering and job booking service that's made just for tradies. So they can answer your calls, book in your jobs, answer frequently asked questions, get messages out to your field guys, whatever you need. So that way you're not answering the phone. You're not having to pay someone to sit in an office and pay the phone. And they're just doing it on a per volume basis so it's you're only paying for the calls that you get and you're getting the high level of professional customer service that you want without having to pay full-time staff member for absolutely so that uh that whole argument on social media about should you have a fixed line or a mobile it's like you know what have both have one or the other it doesn't matter but i think the the point that was being missed in all of that is you should have what your customers want and I don't know if my customers prefer to ring a mobile or a fixed line, and I don't think anybody can figure that out easily. So just have both. Have a 1300 or a 1800 number or a fixed line if you've got it. Just hang on to that for the sake of the cost and get somebody professionally answering your phone. If you're big enough to employ your own person, do that. But if you can't justify that expense, there is a, there is a simple solution out there right now, as Michaela's talked about. It's like it's, it's 20 bucks a day or 22 bucks a day. That's it. So head to tradiesva.com.au forward slash my cost and uh, you can do the sums yourself and see how much is actually costing your business uh, and they'll be able to help you from there. So there you go, the great phone debate. Uh. <laughs> I think the big thing is just have get the call answered and do something with yeah, the call. Yeah, get the calls. Like, have good customer service. Instead of trying to save, you know, 100 bucks a month or whatever your fixed line's costing you, is figure out how to actually catch the people who are ringing you. So, anyway, hope that was useful. Listeners, uh, yes, um, go and check out uh, one of our show supporters, Tradies VA. And uh, if you go to tradiesva.com.au forward slash my cost, you can uh, put your own numbers into that funky little calculator thing, thingamajig there and figure out what it's costing you to answer your own phone. And the other show supporters as well we'd like to give a call out to is Facebook face-to-face training so if you want to upskill your staff so they can provide better customer service while on the job site or you want to be a better manager or leader uh, you might get some government rebates so you can do Maybe. some free training and you look great to your staff so head to face to faceedu.au for more info cool cool well uh hope you've enjoyed today's episode i've and got to go the phone's ringing uh all right i'll just take a message ring ring them tell them to ring back later <laughs> Until next time. Bye. You've been listening to the Tradies Business Show with Warwick Bidwell and Michaela Clark. Want to get off the tools into true business ownership? Find out how at tradiesbusinessshow.com.